Today I feel kind of tired and grumpy and I was wondering if it's something to do with a second night in a row of taking just one-eighth of my medications. But on second thought, it probably has more to do with PMS. So I think I'm just a little bit err today. And so it wasn't really good timing to watch a webinar put on by the Mental Health Commission of Canada on social enterprise. And it was called Social Enterprises, an Innovative Approach to Creating Employment Opportunities for People with Mental Illnesses. And they had a panel of speakers and they were people who had social enterprises and employed people with mental illnesses and other people who ran different kinds of enter social enterprises that actually were integrated with clinical services like reporting to the clinician about things and I thought that was a bit weird. Again, it's sort of warped into something that is being done to us. I don't know. Anyway, I think social enterprises are great and I think it was just more PMS hearing the way that some of them were talking. One person said, oh, sometimes we pair a healthy person up with a person with mental illness. Like what, how can someone judge who's healthy and who's not? And it's just lame to say that. And it really bothered me to hear the way they were talking about people. So it was actually a good reminder for me to remember how people who work in the system or in any kind of framework where they're saying, oh, these people over here have illnesses and we over here are healthy. It just really bothers me and it just rubbed me the wrong way. And I keep saying that. So it's a reminder that hearing that kind of stuff really, really gets me going and that might not be a good thing. And also, it's just interesting that I can talk and talk to myself and not upset myself, of course not, but just hearing the way people speak about people. And, and there was somebody who was an employer who didn't have a diagnosis of any kind saying, oh, I think it does this and it helps with this and it helps with that. And it just sounds so patronizing and paternalistic and prescriptive. And they did have two people working in social enterprise people with labels and diagnoses and they gave them about five minutes out of the whole hour including the question period which was half an hour so five minutes out of the whole hour and a half and I thought they'd have a little bit more information for people with labels who might want to start social enterprises but it was more around integrating it into mental health services or sort of promoting businesses to have that social enterprise aspect and support people. And they did say some good things too. And it's also sad that people who are labeled get drugged up and then I think that cause thinking, oh, this person is mentally ill, they're mentally ill. But so much of it is just the numbing effects and side effects of medication. They talk about, oh, the cognitive impairment that goes along with the conditions. What do you mean? People are drugged. They can barely see straight. It's not because of the illness. It's because of being drugged. And I'm reading an article in the Sun magazine, and it features Sarah Davido, or Davidell. I don't know how to say her name. And I heard about her already by taking... Emma Bragdon's course on the peer movement on her website, Integrative Mental Health for You. And that's Integrative Mental Health University or something. And reading the article, she runs this recovery learning community in Western Mass. And that article is like music to my ears, just the way she says things and talks about things. So I was reading that this morning and then I heard the webinar and it's just going from from one beautiful perspective of receiving people to, oh, these people, we 
We pair these old people with healthy volunteers or healthy individuals. It just, uh, I, I can't even, I don't even know what to say, and I probably shouldn't say anything further on the topic. But it would be cool to create some kind of recovery learning community. But I don't even like the word recovery, even in terms of recovering one's life or something, because it still implies that something is wrong with the person. And a lot of times crisis is needed for change. And I also feel like when this transformation happens, when this transformational crisis happens, certain functions atrophy and certain functions that don't yet have a place in society actually grow. And I feel like in order for our gifts and potential to come out, some of our functioning has to be shut down. Because if it wasn't, we would just continue functioning the way we were functioning. So it's actually part of the design of the crisis to make us non-functional, quote-unquote non-functional, in certain areas of society that have been overemphasized and people value way too much in life. And the only way for us to be acquainted with other values a lot of the times is to just make it so we actually have a very hard time participating in those structures. So even with social enterprise, one of the people who was talking made it sound kind of like the clinicians helped a person to decide you should work in social enterprise. So it's prescriptive. This is part of your recovery plan. You're going to work in this social enterprise. And they didn't say it that way. But sometimes if that's the only option, then that's the only option. So it's not really options. People in the clinical environment tend to think, oh, we created this great service and program, and so people will just want it. And that's what they have to do because that's all that's available. So it's prescriptive. It's coercive in a way. And I'm not saying that that's all that it's about because these services definitely help people a lot. But it's still delivered from the top down. It's delivered from these professionals that come in and say certain things about what it should look like. And so yeah, some of our functioning shuts down so we can start to discover new functioning and new gifts and new potential and new ways of relating and new values of life, not just, oh, if you are able to work part-time in a job for the rest of your life, which will be 25 years shorter when you're in the mental health paradigm, then this is success. But maybe that's not success to us anymore. And maybe we are to be looking at other areas and I feel like looking at the gifts and the potentials that come out are more important. Like maybe one of the gifts or potentials is creating new context through which to be able to allow the gifts and potentials to come out because there's a different understanding. So if there's these gifts and potentials trying to flower and then a person just said you're mentally ill and here's the programs available for you to recover through and try to fit back into society. But I don't think that's the way it's supposed to be. So creating other contexts will allow our brains to see different ways that we could move through the world, even if it's just talking to ourselves. So society and the mental health system and the doctors and the clinicians want us to get back to functioning. But what is functioning? Isn't most of the world dysfunctional? And what's called functioning is actually, when you look at it at the bigger picture, it's actually quite dysfunctional. So can we think in terms of possibilities and, and potential and not recovery? Recovery is trying to fit back, functioning like a cog in the machine of society, as if that's going to make us happy and make our supposed symptoms go away. And maybe people try to go back into working and they get anxiety in social situations and then it's hard to function and maybe those situations are just wrong maybe we can sense all the negativity in people around us and it makes us anxious it's there's so many dynamics and things and and people don't even get it and recovery implies there's something wrong with not being able to function there could be something right with it which is 
atrophying those areas in the brain that are related to functioning in this dysfunctional society and trying to initiate energy flowing through other areas of the brain and that could be to bring online this other dimension and other capacities that are there that we don't know if they're there and what they are and how they unfold if we don't move into something else entirely because what is functioning working nine to five going home watching tv eating fast food having a car buying some crap like that's our life and when you think about that compared to what we get connected with in map consciousness there is no comparison so i say move back towards embodying map consciousness don't try to fit back into society and i don't remember if i talked about with my term see willing possibilities that seeing is willing possibilities without needing to will anything so we have the will of the ego and effort but when we're really seeing with clarity the seeing is the willing of possibilities so there is no willing or will separate from direct clear perception but when we're not clearly perceiving we think we need will and maybe we won't need the bandwidth of entertainment and information overload if we are living in our own living context so if we're always creating new memes and the mimetic structure is adding to itself and unfolding there's nothing static it's always moving so there's no need for any entertainment and the stories that we tell ourselves or our personal story is about the center it's about the me and it's also about the center in that it is around the center and circulates around the center so in the way of circulation it actually creates the center it probably is a centripetal force of some kind we are learning to live in the moment as the moment as that's where the love is and the moment is a movement it's a different movement than our thoughts about it and could so-called relapse really be a relapse into a conversation with Gaia could be an episode of Gaia log and I don't know if I ever changed the word ego to see go and it's sort of like see and go perception and action so when we transform we don't have an ego but we have a seago so the C frontal cortex becomes the seat of the seago which is that brain structure is devoted to perception and action without the delay of thought and it seems like in map consciousness the energy in the brain is starting to redistribute so one of the important things could be to know how to channel energy and share it and and move with this redirecting of energy process and i feel like when we don't understand that and know how to do that it gets translated into moods because we don't know how to actually communicate something so it's held in and then that energy is directed into changing our mood or the way we appear to other people but if we're able to actually communicate something then we won't appear that way to other people or ourselves and can we go from medication to meditation and not meditation as in sitting there staring at the wall and breathing but meditation in the sense that krishnamurti talks about it which is complete awareness of everything every day in daily activities of life and i actually realized that on saturday it could mark the first day of officially being a psychiatric survivor and i'm not sure how long that will last that i'm off medication hopefully it's forever and i do feel like being diagnosed with a mental illness can be a path to enlightenment 
And that's a lot more hopeful statement than, oh, you have to take medications for the rest of your life. You'll have a good life. You'll be able to do most things that people do, but people don't tell you that you'll feel like crap on the medication. And then you'll die 25 years earlier than everyone else. So maybe when I get back to my hometown, I will start a harm reduction group for coming off psych meds. And a note to self, speed of light, speed of sound, law of least action, the speed of freedom. Instantaneous, one plank length. And this is going to be a bipolar big bang. And I noticed too when listening to that webinar that it seems like the more we try to function, people who go into map consciousness, the more we try to function, the more symptomatic we are. So we get more, say, anxiety or something. And what does that say about functioning? If we were truly operating in the true function of being a human being, wouldn't more functioning create more functioning? So what is it that creates more functioning? And I think functioning in the current society is actually dysfunctional. It's against our neurology. So much so that a good percentage of people have to be drugged to be able to attempt to participate in that again. And I started to write a business plan a while ago for special messages wellness. Making making the world a better place for those who have been labeled. And I don't really like that statement that much because it's still a negative statement. But it's more about the peer potential project, which is bringing out the potential of peers. And it would be cool if the peer potential project was a social enterprise that we co-create together based on our unfolding potentials as we interact and relate in ways that are diet and provolog ish and have a manic epimimetics project recontextualizing from the inside out so getting together and recontextualizing and talking about things in our terms on our terms and part of the purpose too was to render psychiatry medicating and labeling obsolete to create a space of thinking together as one entity to harvest mania for the good of humanity conscious self-sabotage of the ego and inconsistency random decontravisions to collaborate with humanics to find the people who can support people through this transformational process to create a community of people who see in these ways to increase wellness literacy and human capacity literacy for this specific type of neuro tribe of people to increase visionary literacy to increase lifestyle design practices, manic lifestyle design and happiness first, to augment human capacities of kindness, altruism, laughter, play, spontaneity, the list goes on, all the characteristics that really make life worth living, to normalize distress and extraordinize living, to increase social capital and create a new social capital that is yet to be recognized, to create gatekeepers, to extreme well-being and thriving, to restore the brain to learning, to create safety to be manic, like in clowning or DJing or improv. So safe outlets for some of that energy that comes through when we're first really being animated. Provides safe space. Set up public displays of happiness and celebration train a human distress crew that can go out and help prevent people from being funneled into the mental health system, create a resource of lived experience tips and also on relanguaging, and create a conference for people who go into manic magic consciousness, not about the pathology, 
but about possibility and potential. Create more and more memes for Mannix and create a culture and a language so that we don't default into the language and give our experiences over to the mental health authorities. And if we have that language, we're not gonna believe their language. And maybe in terms of prevention, having some people who go through this transformation speak with youth, not about, oh, this is my mental illness and this is how I got help and blah, 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 but actually on how important it is to actually be who they are, to really do that at all costs, even against the pressures of their parents. If they want to be a farmer and their parents say you have to be a doctor, be a farmer because you'll be a doctor but you'll be on some kind of pill and that's not life. So prevention, not this early intervention stuff of when all these kids have this anxiety, why are they having this? It's because of we're not allowed to be who we are and who we came here to be. We get funneled into the machinery of society at such a young age. And at some point, something breaks. And it's important to go for what it is that you want in your heart. And I was thinking today, I think the most important thing for me and what I can do perhaps is maybe help people come off medication somehow because without that we're really still moving in the paradigm of the mental health system and our possibilities and our potential are really limited because we're drugged up we can't see properly we can't think straight we are not ourselves and and it's just so tragic And through these talks with myself, I've talked about things that I want to create, but most of them I can't create by myself. And so I might actually just wait to create something until I get some feedback of some sort and know what to move forward with, because right now I really don't know. I don't really know how to help people and I, I think it's almost rude to even imagine that I would know how. But I guess sharing my journey and dialogue with myself, the main thing I would invite people to do is think about things on your own terms, in your own terms. Make up your own terms if there's no terms to describe it. and see what happens. Make meaning out of these experiences. They have meaning. And maybe it's not meaning ultimately, but there's some kind of meaning moment to moment. And we can never really know exactly what that is, but we can try to put some of that felt sense into words. And it's difficult when we first get in touch with this, putting these felt senses into words, when usually we're just throwing words back at words, throwing words back and forth to each other as human beings. But these sensations we have, they're for ourselves and we can kind of relate them. I don't know what I'm talking about anymore. I'm pretty much finished extrapolating that notebook. I have a page of things left that I could talk about, but I have to look some of them up. So maybe I will start listening to my old videos. So then I can do a bit of a summary for the video and make a few points on what I talk about in each video. I don't know if I'll do that or not, but it depends if there's energy behind it. If I feel like I'm able to learn something or make it more helpful in some way because when I first started doing it I wasn't 
intending it for anything helpful in particular, but maybe looking back at it now, knowing what I know now a year later, maybe I'll be able to learn from it and and make it more searchable or something. Again, I don't know what I'm talking about. So yeah, starting tomorrow, it'll be 20 days until the one year mark. <laughs>